You are listening to the Life Coach School Podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 426. Welcome to the Life Coach School Podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. It's going to be a fun day. I have all my friends here with me. I actually have all instructors from our certification program, and we invited them on the podcast today to talk about why we think everyone should get certified in the model. And we're going to talk about the components of our training, what happens to you as you transform within it. And we're going to hear from these instructors what it's like for them to teach it and what they've learned about humans (laughs) and about our students from being teachers in certification. So welcome, everyone. I'll just go through and we can, all of you have been on the podcast before, yes? So this is round two for everyone. So maybe just a quick say your name and just one sentence about who you are. How about that? Let's start with you, Dex. Okay. Hi, my name is Dex Randall. I've been in Scholars since 2017, Scholars Instructor, CCP Instructor, and I'm really all about burnout. I work a lot with burnout in my private practice. Perfect. Okay. And hey, if you want to see us, we all look very cute, especially Dex. This outfit is everything. If you want to see us, you can come. First of all, go on social media because there'll be clips of us on there. But otherwise, you can go to lifecoachschool.com forward slash 426 and you'll see the video of us. Bev, say some things. Hi, I'm Hi. Bev Aaron. I'm the deep dive coach and I am a master certified instructor with the school and I've been teaching with the school forever. I've taught every course. So it's a definite yes, all of it. Exactly. Forever. And your background is everything. <laughs> right? Look at you. It's so I good. Know. If you Thank all want to see what your Zoom background can be like, come check out this video. I'm telling you. Martha. <laughs> My name is Martha I am, and I'm a master coach. My niche is helping people stop binge eating. I've been in scholars since day one and an instructor since around 2017. And yeah, a coach in scholars and instructor inside of scholars as well. Yay. Awesome. Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Green, and I'm a master certified coach here with the school, obviously. And obviously. obviously, And I'm an empowerment life coach, and I've been instructing since 2019. Amazing. Cara. Hi, I'm Cara Gazy, and I am a business and money mindset coach. And I was introduced to LCS in 2018, and I have devoured everything since that day. And I have gone to be a scholars coach, a CCP coach, a master coach instructor. I do it all and love it. Yay. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm trying to keep this podcast to 30 minutes, which is impossible with all the juicy things that we want to talk about. But one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot as it applies to life coach training and getting certified is how this training is applicable to everyone and not just to people who want to become life coaches for a living. And we have a lot of people that come through the school that, you know, are doctors or work in corporate or are leaders in other areas of their life, or they just want to master the model. And one of the things that I feel like we don't do a good enough job of is inviting all those people into our training because they're always like, is it okay if I come? And we're like, what? Of course. So I really want to change that. I want to change that invitation. And I'd love to hear from each of you why you think everyone should be certified in the model, whether they're going to be a coach or not, and what you think certification does in terms of using the model versus just listening on the podcast or scholars. And I know there's probably going to be a lot of repetition here. So we'll start with you, Martha. And then if anyone has anything to add, they can just throw it in as well. So I first want to start with how applicable everything is when you join the coach certification program, whether you're going to be a coach in your own business, you're going to coach for the school. I have had students who use their coaching in dentistry. They Mm. use it in medicine, in therapy, just as parents, real estate agents. And I even had a Brazilian waxer, one of my students. What? Okay. You can see how that could come in handy. Exactly. I said I did that once and I for sure needed a coach. So (laughs) So it's like, 
I think what the coach certification program does, unlike anything else, is it teaches you how to kind of live your life forward instead of like being pulled from behind. Mm. And what it does is it slows everything down in a way that is manageable and digestible with the model. And I think this is the the appeal to every single one of my students is it is something that they can learn no matter what their experience is. Some of them have been trained in other coach certification programs. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I had one student, she said, I don't even know what happened. It was Saturday night. I saw Brooke in an ad. I pressed a button and here I am. It's Monday morning. (laughs) So like some people just are so new to it. And when they apply it in their lives, I think what they see is so much more freedom instead of living a life that's contingent on other people doing certain things so that they can be happy or, you know, people giving them things that they've always wished they had, or even Mm. learning to appreciate that they can deserve things that they never thought they deserve, like their whole worldview and perception of themselves changes. And I think that's the miracle I've seen in student after student, term after term. Love it. Anyone else want to add? If I can add, Brooke, I think the reason to become certified in the model is that the model appears to be very simple, and that's the beauty of it. It is how simple and elegant it is, but actually using it properly is quite complicated, and there Mm. are so many steps that you can make where you make mistakes, and then you lose the transformational power of the model. Mm. So you come to CCP with us, and we show you all the parts that you're not seeing, all the times you think it's a a fact, and we're like, no, it's not, and the times you think it's a thought, and that it's a fact, and then you get to see the nuance, and you practice it so many times during our training that the whole world looks different to you. Mm, that's so well said. Anyone else? I'd like to add something to what Bev said, because I think people don't understand the model very well, even if they've been working with it for quite a long time. And all of the rules and the disciplines just deepen and deepen and deepen the power. I think, you know, if people have been exposed to in scholars, they see the kind of the tip of the iceberg. Mm, no, and they think no. that, okay, I've got an unintentional model. Life is horrible. I've got an intentional model. I can rescue myself immediately. And they kind of latch onto that without understanding the whole depth of what becomes possible when you become an expert at using Mm. the model, what you can actually create from that place. So good. Catherine, were you going to say something? Yeah. I just, I think that the model going through certification to learn how to use the model deepens your understanding and it provides you with more nuance of how to use the model in your own life. Not so much just here's my unintentional model and my intentional, but how to utilize it, when to utilize it, what to do with it. And becoming certified really allows that deepening of the understanding. Whether you become a coach and you go out and coach other people, or if you just continue to use it in your own life with the people around you, right? I think that's such a fabulous thing that we can all learn from in such a deeper way. And certification for me really helped that. And I see that with so many of our students, right? They're like, oh, I thought I knew it. Now I really know it. Yeah. I was just talking to one of my friends and I taught him the model and we've kind of been playing around with how thoughts create feelings, just kind of in a casual way. And then he was like so excited it's interesting. I was asking him about like how he was feeling and I was telling him it's really important to not just say good or bad, how important it is to like be able to distinguish and refine like exactly. Are you frustrated or are you mad? Like there's a difference there. Are you agitated or are you frustrated? And when you understand like the difference between those two things, then you can maybe access the thought that's causing it. And he was saying, yeah, because then you can change it. Then you can change that thought right away. And the way I described it to him, I'm like, that's level one. And level one is amazing. We got to go through level one. And we all go through level one when we learn it on the podcast and when we do it in scholars. And that level one work changes your life. So I think what happens is people think the model changed my life. Now I'm done. And we're like, oh no, (laughs) you just got your life changed at level one. There's so many different layers and so many different like components to be able to learn. And as you go through what we do in life coach training is you get taught the concept in a much deeper way than in any other one of our programs. And you see it demonstrated and then you practice it. You practice it on yourself. Then you practice it on someone else. And then you practice it with feedback. It's kind of like when I used to say, you know, you don't really learn something until you teach it. 
right? And so basically, as you're going through this process, you're having to teach it to your client. You're having to do it with your client. That's when you really, I think, internalize it. Can I speak to the 2.0 that you kind of mentioned? Like there's like the first level. So I think one of the beautiful things about CCP is that there are so many opportunities to challenge what we currently believe about ourselves. Mm. So I watch students go through the modules, especially about feelings. This seems to be the one that just blows the door open, Mm -hmm. that it's okay to feel bad and that it's so empowering to feel bad sometimes because sometimes life hurts. And that when we don't try to make the bad things feel good right away, then we have so much more freedom because we're not running away from the experience we have right now. And so I had, I've had students go through that piece and it's like, yeah, I think I knew that, you know, from scholars and I've started to do that work. And then we get to the work around buffering and not, you know, the choice between having a synthetic life and a life that's just like real. And so I had a student and we went through the stop over eating and she was like, I was pretty sure I didn't have an eating problem. And then we went through stop over eating. It's like, I nibble all the time when I'm around my husband mm. at night, because I don't really feel like watching TV. I love him, but I don't really feel like spending the evening watching TV. And we got to the stop over drinking. It's like, you know, I didn't really think I had a drinking problem. Now Brooke's <laughs> kind of getting on my case a little bit. And it's like, but what she was able to do was really ask herself, what conscious choices did she want to make about eating and about drinking? And then she could live differently from there. So I think yes. that's the 2.0, the second level that I see in CCP. Yeah, it's so good. And listen, when you come into training, you may come in with that base already, or you may learn it as you're going through it. But because the way that we set up the certification, and there's a reason why it's a lot more expensive. There's a reason why there's a lot more focus and time and energy put into it is because you're going to go through those levels quickly. You are going to discover things about yourself and change your life so dramatically that the results will be, I mean, I feel like it's a full transformation. And I I would love to hear you, maybe a couple of you talk about either a personal transformation that you went through as you went through it, I mean, you kind of touched on this just now, Martha, but what do you see happen to your students from, you know, day one to the end of the training? I'll add to that. You start thinking in models as well, which is so incredible. Once yes, you it becomes like models, riding a bike. Yeah, it yeah. is. You start thinking in models and like when you're going through your day to day, you can be in a negative emotion like frustration or I'm annoyed or you feel a certain way. And then you're like, oh, what is creating this? And you can see that you're attributing that to the C, right? Yes, of course. Versus yeah. your thoughts. So it just gives you another layer once you're trained in it to start thinking in models. Mm. And it's the foundation really for all the other concepts we teach, yes, right? Yes. You can understand other concepts like buffering, like emotional adulthood, all of those things so much better when you really understand the model and practice thinking in models. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Okay. Speak to transformation, what you've seen either yourself go through or a student maybe. Oh my goodness. I would say for, I'll start with myself. Like before I knew the model, I knew I was like great. And I knew that I was really good at things, but I would always look for external approval. Like I would look for other people who I respected or loved to say, Kara, you're great. Or Kara, you know, you're doing this well. And when I learned the model and I learned it's my thoughts that create my feelings, it really gave me the empowerment to say, no, Kara, I can own my greatness and give Mm -hmm. myself that approval. So okay. before I really didn't have a framework to understand why I wanted that external validation so much. Right. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's just a C. There's something I'm making that mean that I don't need that C. I can figure out how to make that mean myself, like how mm-hmm. to come up with those thoughts myself. And now I like look in the mirror and like you say, Brooke, I wink at myself. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, you, you did that. Yes. And it feels so yummy and so good because I don't need my husband to say that. I don't need my teachers to say that. I can say that to myself. And that's the best transformation I think I've had with the model. I love it. So good. The transformation that I see most commonly, almost universally with the students is when we start everyone thinks they have to be a certain way. So there's Mm. this sort of like closed, because in most professions, we have to leave who we are behind and then we become, you know, this like persona of the profession. And so they think they have to coach a certain way and do the model a certain way. And through the exploration, the transformation becomes 
who I am is exactly right to mm. certify as a life coach and become a life coach. Yes. And then we just see the loosening and the opening and the personalities and the lightness. And that is the beauty of taking coach training, whether it's for yourself as a person or to become your profession. You yes. just become the same wherever you are. It's so beautiful. I think that one of the things that is so important when we teach in coach training, one of the things we teach in coach training that we don't teach in scholars and we don't teach on the podcast is how to hold space. And the skill of holding space is not something that comes naturally to human beings. So you can be an amazing person. You can be well-educated. You can be loving. You can be all the things. You don't know how to hold space. I don't care. You're not taught to how to hold space in school. You don't know how to hold it. So everyone wants to come into coach training and be great, right? I know the model. I've studied the tools. I've been in scholars 25 years. I know how to do this. We're like, you don't know how to do You're going to suck at this. That's what we tell everyone when they come in because you're a human being and you are programmed to judge. You're programmed to fix. You're programmed to help. You're programmed to give advice. You're programmed to commiserate and empathize in a way that isn't from that space. And so one of the beauties I think of coach training is we teach you how to hold space and you learn how to do that with yourself, which is such mm -hmm. a kind, beautiful thing to do with yourself. But also when you try to coach other people and listen, we know you're trying to coach other people because you can't help yourself. We know you want to help them with the model. You know that you know how they should live their lives. But when you coach people without having learned to hold space, you mm -hmm. can actually create the opposite effect where they don't even want to know the model because you're actually not doing it in a loving, proper way. So that's one of the other really important skills that I think coach training, and listen, you can't just tell you, hey, this is what holding space is, and then you get it. That is the one thing that you have to practice and get feedback and practice and get feedback and make so many mistakes on. Were you going to say something? Someone else, Catherine? So yeah, just in terms of holding the space, what I think is so brilliant that we do teach is how to do that for ourselves first. You're your own client first as you go through certification. And you learn how to really understand what it means to be non judgmentally compassionate with your own mm. thinking. Yes. And throughout the certification, we help you understand what it actually means. And often we don't even notice that we're being judgmental with ourselves. Right. I think we're just stating the facts. So learning what a fact actually is mm -hmm. versus a thought, just going back to the why learn the model thing, that really helps you hold space for yourself so much differently as well. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting to get someone that's so experienced that comes, you know, with the model and they come into coach training and they keep explaining to you that something's a fact. And you're like, mm -hmm. actually, that is a thought. And they're like, what? And this actually happens to me sometimes when I'm being coached. I'm like, what do you mean? I remember Kara was coaching me one time and she's like, you know, that's just a thought. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? She's like, that's just a thought. I'm like, what? What is happening? It's like so cool to have someone and it's consistent feedback, you know, on an ongoing basis, not just that one time. Yeah, right. so good. Yeah. Go ahead, Dex. When you're talking about learning the model at this really, really deep level and really feeling it and understanding it and absorbing it and integrating it and holding space at the same time, mm. holding space is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. But I think when we learn those two things together, the transformation I see coaches going through when they're learning those two things together is suddenly to start resting back inside themselves as good enough. Mm. And it's kind of, to me, it seems to be the difference between trying to fix everything in life from the action line, which is being a human doing, to mm -hmm. coming back home and being a human being. Right. And that, that transition is quite unfamiliar for most people who've had a career where fixing stuff was what they were supposed to do. Action is what caused results. So and weaning good. people off the action line as causing results. Weaning them was, off the action that's line. It. That's so good. That's what we do. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, isn't it true? We like deprogram all the training that we we've gone through and all the socialization. Like we've been taught, you have to know how to do everything and you have to do it right. And you can't fail and don't ask too many questions and don't get it wrong and don't question the teacher and all those things. At our school, we do the exact opposite, right? It's like you come in and we want you to fail and we want you to practice and we want you to question everything and and we want you to let go of trying to be perfect and trying to get an A and trying to solve emotions with actions, which is what I think you're referring to too. And that is not something that is easy to learn, I think, in just a couple 
classes or a couple coaching sessions. When you are doing all the components that happen in coach training, meaning learning, practicing on yourself, on other people, getting feedback, and then watching coaching demonstrated too, I think, and seeing, like we always talk about how when you can watch something from outside of yourself, you can see yourself in it so much easier than when you're the one being coached. So I think that's another big piece of it. Anyone else have something they want to add to that? Yeah, I want to add, like for the people who don't want to be coaches necessarily, we know holding space inside of a coaching container is so important, but even holding space in our lives for our kids' meltdowns, for people who are grieving, I think we've been conditioned to fix, to feel good. And so we want to do that even in our personal lives, but it's so important to like hold space for where people are without judgment and let them experience intense emotions or heartbreak without trying to fix. So I think that's a way that it comes in in our personal lives as well. Yeah. So good. Go ahead, Martha. I think this is one of the ways that our students are just so inspiring because to come into class and do this work, it takes such vulnerability Mm. and such courage because the only way their peers are going to be able to become coaches is if they're willing to be vulnerable enough to share something really real about their lives. And so it like, there's so much that's involved, like a community of trust, a community of respect, nothing leaves the room and all of that. And the magic of holding the space, like I've seen it allow a student to deprogram everything that they had learned growing up in a cult that they just thought were absolute facts. Mm. And it took six months. And this is where another piece of the magic, it's like us together in a room for six months and all holding the space for this student and one another, but watching this student transform with like the love of all these people. And then one belief at a time, he didn't have a right to speak. He didn't have a right to live. Like All of these beliefs, one at a time, got peeled back and just think students are like such an inspiration for one one another and for us instructors too. Yeah. And there's so much that we learn from them. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think it's the privilege and such an honor to be able to hold space as an instructor and then as a coach. And then even like what you were saying to like bring your whole self to a place where maybe you never have before in this Mm -hmm. environment of like deep learning and to maybe, you know, expose something you've never exposed to anyone and to have it be met with unconditional love and to experience. I know so many of my students feel this way to experience that yourself makes it so compelling to want to do that and make an impact on the world. Like once you've experienced coaching, you're just like, I have to coach everyone. And that's why we want to make sure that you're certified before you start doing that. We're like, please don't coach people against their will. <laughs> please make sure. Was there anyone else that wanted to add to that? Were you going to say something? Bev, I, yes. I wanted to add, I think another reason to become certified in the model with us is I've seen so many people that I know, friends and neighbors and relations who have learned the model through me and then gone on to Brooks podcast and because of our culture, we've, we become very judgy about our thoughts. So mm-hmm. there's like good thoughts and bad thoughts and I have to change those and I'm a bit ashamed about these thoughts. And again, that's very simplistic view of the model. That is what we've got when we're learning it, not through a certification process. Uh, then yes. you come to coach certification, you realize there's no thoughts that are good or bad. Let's explore. Let's hold space and explore them to see the effect of them. And, Mm. you know, you just get to let down, take a breath and let go of some of that judgment and then just become so much more gracious with yourself and anyone else you speak to regarding the model. So powerful. I was just thinking, actually, there's something like miraculous, I think, about being in a group. We're about to do this coach training live. So if you want to come join us, being in a group with people that haven't done this work in in this level at this level before. And to even just put, I was just saying for me, I'm like old school. I like a model right up on a flip chart, like with a green pen. Like that's how I, you know, kind of started coach training so many years ago. And that's how I like to do it. And just to see like a thought is just a sentence in your mind. And even if the thought is super charged with negative emotion, it's still just a sentence in your mind. So I love the way you're saying it's almost like when we first learn the model, we realize that facts are neutral, but then we almost get to the point where we understand that 
thoughts can be neutral too. We don't have to judge ourselves for the thoughts. And then all of a sudden there's so much freedom in everything in our lives and everything becomes a choice. And I think that's one of the things that you get when you take this work deeper. And it's always so fun to watch how delighted everyone is. Not everyone, but there's quite a few people that come and they're like, I already know all this. Like, I already understand where the C line is. I already understand what a feeling is. And then they're like, faces are just like, what the heck just happened, right? This is such a deeper level of work. And more and more and more, I've been wanting to deepen everyone's level of work. Like, I have so many people that listen to the podcast. And still, when I talk to them, there's just another layer I want to teach them. I'm like, please come, please come to the school and let me take you beyond level one. For sure. So the way I'd like to end this is one of the things I love about our school and I love about all of our classes is like the diversity of people that we have come through. Martha kind of alluded to it in terms of careers that we have, but also we have people from all over the world, people from all different life experiences. And so I know you all feel the same way because we've talked about it before, like what an honor and privilege it is to be able to coach. But I think some people listening maybe haven't signed up for coach training or haven't considered it for themselves because they're thinking this isn't for me. And Mm -hmm. money may not be the problem and time may be the problem. They may just think, you know, I've talked to a lot of people, they say, well, English isn't my first language, or I don't know if I'll feel welcome there, or I have so many negative thoughts, or I don't think I'm like Brooke Castillo. So I would love for each of you just to kind of say something to those people that are listening that might be thinking something like that, since you've seen so many people come through the school and and you could speak to that from a really educated space. Let's start with you, Dex. I'm not like Brooke Castillo either. (laughs) (laughs) But here's what I'm seeing. I am seeing more diversity coming in. I'm seeing more people of color, more men actually coming in, more people with mental health concerns, more queer people from different professions, creatives, religions special needs or special needs people. I think it's for absolutely anybody. If you're human, you've got breath in your body, come on. If you have thoughts, we can help you. (laughs) That's awesome. Go ahead, Bev. For me, it's such a privilege to be part of the Laugh Coach School and see how incredibly seriously we take inclusivity and diversity and how we're always thinking so deeply. What are we missing? What more do we need to do? Mm-hmm. And what I want to say to you is if you don't see yourself here, you're needed even more. Right. Whoever you yes. represent that's not here is needed. And what I can guarantee you, having seen how deeply and seriously we're taking this, you will be made welcome. And if you aren't, you let us know and we will do what it takes. Love it. So good. Cara. Yeah, I think all of us are looking for our people, right? Mm. Somewhere we belong. Yes. And you and Erica have set the tone at the top and in every organization that matters. And it's part of the values of the school to be inclusive, to be diverse. So To Beth's point, if you don't see someone, a representation of yourself, you belong here. We want you here. You matter. We need your voice in our community. So I would say first, like, are we your people? Does this ring true for you? Mm -hmm. And if it does, join us because you do belong and will be welcome. What about someone that might be thinking they're not smart enough? Why would they think that? That's a real thing though, right? Yeah. Like I've had a lot of students that I didn't know, I didn't feel like I was as smart as you. I didn't feel like I, I would fit in because it seems like everyone there mm-hmm. is like super smart. Like, what would you say? Yeah, well, we simplify things. Like I, I mean, really simplify things. And I don't, I wouldn't say I'm like an intellectual. I wouldn't yeah. describe myself that way. I think that I'm smart, but regardless. I don't think it matters. If you are Mm. called and drawn to this work, you will get what you need. Mm. And you have a diversity of coaches that explain things and instructors that explain things in different ways. So if it resonates with you on the podcast or somewhere else in the school, it will resonate with you inside. Yeah. I do think that's a really important note to make. First of all, I'm not smart. It's just a thought. And we'll talk about that when you get here. The other thing is... (laughs) But the other thing we want to talk about is like one of the things for me 
that is so important is to keep everything as simple as possible and as customized to each student as possible. So if a student isn't understanding it, we have private attention for you. And especially like if English isn't your first language and you need some extra time, we're here for all of it. And so please don't let that be the reason. Like I got on this call with a bunch of students that were thinking about joining certification. And a couple of them were saying English isn't my first language. And one of them was saying I wasn't smart enough. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? Come on. Like, and then once you they go through the train, they're like, oh my gosh, it was so much easier than I thought. And even though the work is challenging because you have to be courageous to do it, it's not trigonometry here, right? And even if it is, we're breaking it down to addition before we get complicated again. Okay. What about you, Catherine? Well, I was just gonna say that I was one of the people who thought I wasn't smart. Oh, right? yes, so tell us. That's <laughs> ridiculous, first of all, to even think that. But I did, and I'm fully yeah. in it. And what it did for me going through certification was prove to me that that was definitely not the case. Mm. It allowed me to step forward and become who I actually am. Yeah. It wasn't because I, I didn't, it didn't actually exist inside there and I had to somehow create it. It existed already. I was just limiting myself. So whatever it is that you think your limit is, is quite likely your superpower. Yeah. Because if you don't think you're smart because of how you did in school, Come on in. (laughs) Please. please, If you did poorly in school, you're going to love it here. All right, Martha. I think whatever limiting belief someone is feeling about joining the coach certification program, they should bring it to CCP and we can help them with it. There is no better place to do the work of uncovering where did that thought come from? Yes. Right. And I I, I love what Bev and you talked about, which is that you know, thoughts, there's, it's no such thing as good thoughts and bad thoughts and thoughts can be neutral too. And thoughts can also be just so fascinating. Like, where did they come from? How long have we had this thought? Is there any way in which it served us at some point to think a thought like that, but it no longer serves us to think it now? Like if you have any kind of limiting belief, bring it because we for sure can help you with it. And I've taught so many students over the years, and I have never had a student who was not able to become an amazing coach. Oh my gosh, that's so well said. Thank you all so much for coming. The last thing I want to say, and this is real and this is true. If you come to training, if you come to certification, if you come in and you are willing to show up, you will be loved. Mm. That is something we have trained ourselves to do. We've trained ourselves to love ourselves and all of our students. That's what holding space is. So listen, if for nothing else, you just want to be loved, come to coach training. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you instructors. First of all, for all of your service to our students, for representing the school so beautifully, for being such amazing teachers, and most of all, for loving our students. Have a beautiful week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all so much. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out Self Coaching Scholars. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and we apply it. We take it to the next level and we study it. Join me over at thelifecoachschool.com forward slash join. Make sure you type in the the T-H-E lifecoachschool.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join me in self-coaching scholars. See you there.